Welcome to the Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Play Picks and the Lines. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And it is time for the player props video we love to bring you each and every weekday on a very full Monday night slate tonight on January the 3rd. Do check out Nate's great article on playpicks.com with some of those best bets and player props in there as well. And make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Got a couple other videos up for you today as well. And as always, if you do still need a FanDuel or DraftKings account, head to fdpicks.com or dkpicks.com and find those listings in your area, such as what we've got for tonight. Nate, let's get into it. Yeah, the first game on your docket is an intriguing one for player props, to say the least, because you have the Charlotte Hornets playing. You have the Wizards who have kind of taken off offensively um, after a a really rough spell for a while for them. And Bradley Beal being the key reason, we were waiting for him to kind of start to erupt. And in his last two games since coming off the COVID list, he has a double-double in both of those, drops a career high 17 assists last time out. So he's now averaging nearly 30 points and nine assists on a 34% usage rate in his last five and has had some success against Charlotte, which is just getting worse and worse defensively over the years. In his last five, averaging 27 points, six boards, uh, six assists, and hitting nearly four triples per game. He hasn't been taking that many triples this year, but I think, uh, you know, we have Spencer Dinwiddie out, Hal Neto, uh, as well as Aaron Holiday. There's really not a lot of backups for Beal. Um so I like both him and KCP to be chucking from deep against a, a Hornets team that allows the most triples per game as well as the most points per game. Just gave up 41% in Phoenix uh, from from beyond the arc last night. And so they're on a back-to-back. They're already bad at defense. They're on the road. Uh, Beal posting a, a, a healthy 31.5% usage rate at home. He should get over 27.5 points. That's, that's the one that you're not getting great odds on, but – Consider him hitting three threes for plus 158 at FanDuel. I like that. Um, You can also get plus 120 for KCP, Caldwell Pope, to hit three threes um, because he's shooting exclusively threes, basically, and he's going to be the the benefit of those Beal drive and kicks for the most part. And with those other three guards out, KCP is looking at 35 to 40 minutes probably tonight. And, and he's been a sharpshooter his last three, 10 for 27 from deep. So a lot of ways to attack the Hornets defense and expect points in a 232 implied uh, total here. Totally. That's that's where you start with player props uh, whenever you've got a Charlotte Hornets game uh, going on for sure. Uh, either way, um, that pace that they play at, you know, blistering. Uh, and, and in the last couple of games, you mentioned that the Wizards also upping their pace a bunch um, with Bradley Beal back, feeling confident on offense, feeling confident about guys getting threes and, and Beal getting his assist even. So, yeah, I, I'm with all of it, including those two and a half threes for KCP um, at plus 120. Really like those odds there. Uh, moving on to the Joker taking on uh, a team in Dallas that will finally have Luca and KP on the floor together, um, but still loving what Joker can do uh, both on the boards and in his points. Um, you know, we know what he's been doing in his in, in, as of late, getting every and anywhere from 18 to 25 rebounds in a game uh, as of late. In his last four, averaging about 25 a game, 18 boards, um, and we'll say quote unquote only 5.3 assists for him, which is slightly down actually uh, for him, but still five and a half assists a game um, on 39 percent usage rate. So when we say that the uh, that the Denver Nuggets are Nikola Jokic and company, we truly, truly mean it. He's shooting the ball about 40% of the time for them. Um, and when he plays Dallas, you know, especially last time out against them, uh, 35 points, 16 boards and six assists on that 40% usage rate uh, back in November. Um, so, you know, Dallas, they're allowing a ton of points in the paint at home, uh, about 46 and a half. They do a decent job uh, limiting teams uh, on the offensive side uh, to get offensive rebounds, but they do allow, uh, you know, their 21st in defensive rebounding. Um, they're not really clashing the, crashing the the offensive glass and um, you know you look at Joker uh, and what he's done uh, in the last couple of years he's actually uh, increased his defensive rebounding rate to about 38 percent that he's getting uh, defensive rebound opportunities up from about 26 percent um, the last two years so you know he's really stepping it up this year making sure that he gobbles up everything he doesn't give other teams second champ points um, so you know I, I love his 41 and a half points rebounds prop um, it's about minus 118 at FanDuel as he's averaging as we said more than that combined in his last four um, but you could also get that 25 points in a W uh, if you like them to be able to handle this game, we don't really know what to expect too much from Dallas um, tonight. But plus two forty for for Joker to get uh, that the, the um, those twenty five points and the win for the Nuggets. Um, getting those odds makes me feel a little bit better. But if you def- definitely want to feel comfortable about a bet that I would I would 
jump all over those 41 and a half points, despite the the lack of, uh, of juice coming back your way, still something that we know Joker can do uh, night in and night out. And he's continued to do uh, as of late. Yeah, it's those player performance doubles. If you take a Jokic double double in a win, it's almost the exact same thing as the Nuggets money line, which shows you all you need to know about about what he's doing right now. There, it should be a question of a 2020 game in a win, right. because a double double is a foregone conclusion. But it's the points that you should be chasing first and foremost uh, in a win. That is so. That's why I like what you're saying. Twenty five plus points because of that usage rate because the Nuggets barely have enough guys to even play, let alone score. So I would consider that if you want the juice. But I think we're looking at Dallas, which is just struggling on offense all year, playing slow pace, throwing up a lot of bricks, and a guy who's leading the league in defensive rebounding rate. So I think you can absolutely lean on him to be scoring and and getting enough defensive boards to get over that prop. One of the safer bets out there uh, these days. Another center who's getting some good juice here, but because I mean his numbers are low in in this in this rematch with Ma- with the Magic, um, Nikola Vucevic, who who's in two games since leaving Orlando, his first matchup against them, he goes for twenty nine and eleven on nearly a thirty percent usage rate and shoots five for eight from three, uh, toned it down a little bit in that second matchup, a bit of a comfortable win. I mean the Bulls are projected to win by 14 points tonight but with their best defensive guards out we just saw Orlando take the Celtics to overtime last night there's a chance they hang around a little bit here and make sure you squeeze the juice out of Vooch but 17 and a half points is pretty low for a guy who <clears throat> is averaging 18 and a half and 14 rebounds with a 118 offensive rating since the Bulls came off pause uh seven games ago they have the best offense in the league in those seven games. And Vooch, obviously a big part of that. And the three pointers are intriguing because <clears throat> Chicago shooting 47% from deep as a team in that span that, that leads the league and Orlando in their last 10 games is allowing a league high 40% from deep. So those shots are going to be there. Uh, it's a question of how you want to bet it. You know, you're getting terrible odds minus 185 for him to hit two, it goes up to plus 172 for him to hit three triples. I would probably just stick with the points here because he can score inside and out. Um, and then for him to get two more points than that prop, 20 in a win, and then you're getting plus 162 on a team that's a 14-point favorite, it's a good way to juke the money line a little bit there and make sure that Vooch gets his points against his former team as the Bulls likely cruise in this one. Yeah, I mean, the Magic uh, are, are on their last five are giving up 117 points a game, um, bottom ca- bottom five in pretty much every relevant defensive category. They were a team that you might have thought at some at one point in the year, well, they're going to keep it choppy uh, and, and try to keep things low. Then there was a couple games in a row against uh, the Bucks that they gave up 130 plus points. And, and it seems like it's it's really been uh, all downhill for them uh, since they just decided to sell out and just let Franz Wagner uh, take over and do his thing. It hasn't really re- rely- turned into much on the defensive end or any other players as well um, playing too well. So I think, yeah, Vooch getting down low uh, against a team that's struggling big time right now all over the floor on defense uh, is, is a very safe bet there. Um, and last one for me is Bojan Bogdanovic. I'm actually going back to him um, in this one as the uh, Utah Jazz are taking on the Pels here. Um, obviously, we know how bad the Pels are. But Bogey is someone you can you can eye his 17 and a half point total. Feels pretty low for him. Um, that's why it's only about minus 118 at FanDuel. Um, but if you want, you could actually add about four boards, a, a few boards and points to that. So it's 21 and a half points and rebounds combined. That at least gets you back to about minus 111 on your money. Um, but either, either one of those bets I feel good about because, you know, as of late with with bogey uh, against the Pels. He's actually been there their, more their go-to guys, even more so than Donnie Mitchell, um, who's been struggling a ton with his efficiency against the Pels in their last three, especially. Um, they seem to be sort of game planning for him, which frees things up for Bogdanovich, who's in, in those last threes, in his last nine, uh, actually, versus the Pelicans. Since he joined the Jazz, he's averaging 22 points and four boards in those games, shooting really well for 50, 44 from three and 90% from the line um, in his splits there. Actually also making about 3.1 threes a game, so a little bit more than three, three Threes a game uh, in those nine versus the Pels, um, and, and you know I, it's why I can, would even consider his bet my, po- possibly my favorite one. To be honest with you, uh, even money for him to hit more than two and a half threes tonight. Um, Pelicans twenty seventh in three point D and allowing their opponents to shoot forty percent from deep uh, in their last three games, especially. Um, and then Bogey, you know, 
know, regardless of who he's playing, he's been hot in his last eight. He's averaging 20 points, four boards, boards and shooting 44% from three with those uh, about three threes made a game. So um, three threes for him tonight gets you even money. 17 and a half points um, gets you close to even money. 21 and a half points and rebounds combined gets you even closer to even money. Any one of those bets that you like, I would consider. Um, obviously, the, the best juice coming back your way is those two and a half threes made for him. But I think you'll see that that trend continue for them as the Pels obviously are, are, are um, game planning for for Donnie Mitchell, meaning the second best option on offense is usually going to be bogey, especially with those starters. Yeah, and it's a better bet than usual because 50% of his attempts are from beyond the arc. Um, you know, bogey taking seven triples yep. a game. That's what he does, and he's so consistent making them as well. And when teams game plan for Donovan Mitchell, yeah, that's just going to open things up to swing the ball around and get it to that set shooter who really, he doesn't even jump. He just kind of holds it near his head and just strokes it. Yeah. Uh, yeah against a poor team uh, in terms of guarding the three point line, love him to get his points and his threes tonight as the jazz are expected to roll on the road, but on the road, they it's, it winds up being a little closer for Utah more often than not. And that's good. When we talk about bogey only getting 11, the last time these teams played because, because Utah blew him out, but previous two games, you know, he got plenty of points and shot 12 for 19 from three against this defense that can't guard the arc. Yeah, he should be playing a little bit more than if this game was in Utah and this one was pretty much over in the first half, to your point. So that is all the time we have for this one. Make sure you are liked and subscribed to that page. Y'all, so you can check out the other couple of videos we have for you today. Until we see you next, happy betting.